Welcome everybody to the debut edition of the USFL podcast. I'm one of your hosts, the ref representing pro football newsroom, uh, the number one source in alternative football news. I'm joined as always by my man, Zach Kyleman. How you doing today? My friend. Oh, I've had a great day. Um, I've had a great week. You and I have had a great week. It's been, um, my head is like spinning from all the stuff that's come out. And this is just a lead up for our first show as a duo. I know we have so much to talk about. That's all I'm saying. Isn't it amazing? We announced the show a week ago or a little bit over a week ago, not too long ago. And I mean, (laughs) the things that have happened since we first made that announcement, my mind is blown. We, we heard that there was supposed to be, or is expected to be a rapid fire of announcements from the USFL and Holy smokes. I can barely keep up. Needless to say, like you said, we have a lot to talk about. Thanks everybody for joining Thanks for getting us to 100 subscribers on YouTube. We hit our first goal. So stick around to the very end because we're going to announce that lucky winner. Zach, tell them what you get. Ooh, you're going to be getting a cap or t-shirt from the USFL shop. So uh, get your selection. We'll send it your way. Just got to tell us what you want. And if you look here in the background, I got the cap on the good old trusty Vectrex. And for all you youngins out there. Get yourself a Vectrex. Anyway, we're not talking about video games. We're talking about pro football, my friend. I mean, we touched on some of the items in this year in spring football. And like I said, we have a lot to talk about. Before we do, I think it's I think it's appropriate we just do some quick introductions. People might know who we are. People might not know who we are. Quite honestly, they probably don't know who we are. So let's tell them who we are. So again, I'm the ref. I started XFL Newsroom, or actually it was XFL 2K back in January of 2018. So January 25th is going to be our four-year anniversary. Slowly Mm. we transition, well, not slowly, within the first year we transitioned to XFL Newsroom. After the sad, sad news of the illness that we shall not name, I learned that last week on YouTube, do not name the illness, but due to the illness we will, shall not name, uh, XFL was forced to shutter their doors, and we knew, well, we want to keep doing this. We didn't know if the XFL was coming back. What is the best way to go about it? So we started the transition to Pro Football Newsroom, and within, we still have XFL Newsroom, CFL Newsroom, FCF Newsroom, a whole bunch of newsrooms, but the one that you're probably interested in the most, USFL Newsroom. I'm looking forward to doing this used to be the host of this week in the XFL. And this is my first time that I have a co-host. And I'll tell you, Zach, I'm pretty damn excited about that because you probably know it's not really the greatest doing a show by yourself. Sometimes I'm just going to say, <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Yeah. I mean, look, I, it's funny you say that because I'm coming from a show that is just myself, uh, with my background. I mean, you're talking how the site's coming on. It's year four for me. It's year two interacting and being part of the newsroom group here. So, you know, I'm only half of that. And I joined even post XFL as well. So like I'm endearing, like waiting for that to come back too. obviously the USFL as this is the, of course the USFL podcast, that has helped a ton and I am extremely excited for that. So my background mainly is I started gridiron gallery as a different show, like two years, two years going on three years back in April, 2019, it was covering arena football. It was just after the AAF collapsed. I wanted to get into podcasting. I just kind of jumped in with arena football and then the XFL came around and I eventually morphed it into what is now known as gridiron gallery. And that helped me kind of meet up with you here with newsroom and other people on the community's uh, internet pages, if you will, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, you name it. And uh, yeah, we came up with this little idea to do a show. Let's say, let's get our collective talents, put it together. And here we are. And we got a lot of stuff that we're going to be discussing and we're going to have an exciting time moving into this year with this show. I'm excited. So the plans for the show, I mean, I think that's appropriate as well. People probably know, I don't know. What is this? usfl podcast well not only is it the usfl podcast we plan on being the premier usfl podcast we're dropping weekly episodes i yep. would say for the most part are going to drop on friday but i don't know about you zach i am a man that doesn't like to stick to schedules 100 
Fans of Sign Me Up Saturday would know that very well. It's your favorite <laughs> weekly talk show that happens every four or five months. We're not going to go do that. We are going to be a weekly show. Zach is going to hold me to that. I'm going to try to hold it to myself, but we're going to make it happen. Uh, what are some of the things that we're going to talk about on this premiere podcast extravaganza? Well, we got plenty of stuff that we're going to do, especially news discussion early on. I mean, it's, it is technically preseason or, or build up if you want to put it in quotations, whatever you want to do. But once we get into the core of the season, even with news building up as we do this week by week, we might be doing interviews, which we are planning on trying to get some interviews together and have discussions with folks on here besides just you and I. We're going to answer fan questions. And specifically, when we get into the meat and potatoes of the 2022 season, when April 16th according to their 100 day rundown rolls around we're going to be doing some game recaps so we'll be adding that into our repertoire but basically we're going to give you everything you need to know at least in a one week span that comes up every week of the usfl and focus on a specifically that league i'm excited I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, when we're talking about last year going, you know, 2021 going into the year, I really wouldn't have expected the announcement of the USFL. Here we are about six months later and it's, it, we're like, it's like almost a real football league. Now we're so close yeah. to everything happening that, I mean, there's so much that we're going to be able to cover throughout this season. And even after the season, we're going to be bringing you all the latest updates, rumors, scores, more, all of that recaps. And even we're going to go live on a few instances, maybe more, maybe less. I don't know. We'll have to see how the season goes, but definitely Zach and I, we're going to be, be making a trip out to Birmingham. Oh yeah. We will announce oh, yeah. it. We will, it, because you know what, you know what I think would be fun. I think it would be really cool to have a USFL community meetup because I don't know Why about not? you, Zach. I don't know about you, but me personally, I am loving the USFL community so far. They are, I mean, not that I'm not trying to slight the XFL community or any other communities on the internet, but it's the internet. The internet is a tough place. It's a tough cookie. People have a lot of opinions, but I'll say this for the most part, the USFL community is just, let's have a party. We have some more football. We got to deal with Fox. We got to deal with NBC. Flipping, we got some coaches. Who cares? Let's get signed up. And that's yeah, what I'm it, excited about. And the it's most. new and blossoming too. Like that's what's I think crazy is like we're almost reliving a bit of what the XFL back in 2019 and 20 was going in early 2020 was going through was just like either you're having more and more people discover it and that ramp up's getting more and more energy and hype towards it every week now. And I mean, this week alone has helped with that and you're going to keep seeing that. And I think, and I, that's just got me fully in, engaged and energized to be discussing with this and meeting others that are curious about this league or those that are just as passionate. It's a new thing. And we're all enjoying kind of this ride and lead up to what we hope is a high quality product. What we expect, at least not hope expect to be a high quality product from everything that Fox has said on its end with this buildup. So I like the community too. It, it's going places right now. And I've had a blast so far with some people. I mean, it, I met some new people that even I didn't meet in the XFL days earlier on. It's just been continuing to grow. So I know, I, I think you mentioned fan qu questions, but we kind of skipped over it. So I do want to circle back to that. So we're not going to be doing any fan questions for the first episode, but starting on the second episode and going forward, we'll probably pick one to a few. We'll say fan questions every week. How do you enter? Well, there's a couple ways. The easy one, leave a comment down below. I mean, yeah. and while you're at it, hit the like button, hit that bell, ring the bell. It builds morale to ring the bell. I'm getting off topic here. I do that a lot. <laughs> the mailbag. So the easiest way sign us up on a comment. The other ways you can do it though, you can email us at mailbag at usflcast.com. We'll have a link down in the description as well as you can visit usflcast.com, which will have a nice simple form. Send as many as you want. We'll probably only read one of yours a week though, but you, if you have a bunch, send them through. We'll never say no. Well, we might say no, but we won't say no to you sending too many. Recommend you bookmark that website, by the way. Everything you need of it, if we have a new video or show, it's right there. It's pretty easy. You One click, you have all the stuff right there for you, even the mailbag. 
everything is at USFL Cast. You know, one of these days, USFL Cast is going to be the preeminent website on the planet. People might not understand that, but this is the new coming of Google. <laughs> this is the new coming of Yahoo. USFLcast.com. Get signed up. I'll tell you what's the fun. Let's jump into this bad boy now that we got them everything they need to know. Yes. And let's, I guess, tackle this monster of amount of stuff and information we need to get through <laughs> for this first show. For sure. So let's dive into the players' selections first, Stefan, because that really kind of kicked things off to open out this week is kind of a quote unquote big news piece that they revealed. For sure. Well, and again, going back to what we expected, we expected to see a rapid fire of announcements from the USFL to kick off the year. And it was actually January 1st that we reported the USFL was going to hold their draft in the last week of February. And mm -hmm. it wasn't just a couple days later, it was on the 4th. So four days later on PFT Pro Football Talk, they reported that a memo was sent out to the NFL Players Association contract advisors, kind of letting them know how they could get their players entered into the draft pool or the pool, mentioning specifically that play, a player selection meeting will be taking place February 22nd, 23rd. So what does that say? It, mean, it, it sounds like a draft. It looks like a draft, but they're not calling it a draft. Right. So little, let me ask A little bit you. different. Let me ask you, Zach, do, would you expect, do you think this is going to be televised, live stream? What do you think? I, I don't know. I, I, I want to say that because it's a, it's first primarily a made for TV product that the USFL is wanting to do that. Sure. I mean, they could, and Fox has the resources to do so if they are planning to, I just don't know if the crunch, if they will, rather, rather it's more about just let's get this as a formality this year, maybe like next year, if we get to year two. We can then discuss that because I mean, at that point, you know, you will, I eventually you will want to broadcast that. I think people will like that content. I mean, the NFL draft alone is it, its own event. So, you know, the USFL has to be looking at and going, well, Hey, we can, you know, broadcast this at some point. I'm on the fence if they will do it this year, it, the way that they're framing it is more of a formality rather than kind of like a pageantry type of event that you can use for entertainment. So I feel like the phrasing is saying we're not doing it this year. I completely agree. I completely agree. I know this is something that a lot of people don't want to hear, but the truth of the matter is I don't believe that we're going to see the XF, uh, the USFL draft or the USFL player selection meeting, however you want to phrase it. I don't think we're going to see it. That being said, if there is a way that we have access to it, maybe we'll do it live. Maybe we'll do a live stream after the fact, once the rosters are announced. So Although you guys might not get something official on TV or on live stream, the USFL podcast is here. We got your back. So Ooh, yeah. one thing I want to look at. So in all of this news about the player selections, we mentioned the memo. So on the 4th, what was it, Monday? Was that what day it was? That would be a Tuesday, I believe. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday. So Tuesday, we were actually able to obtain the memo from a source close to the league. So I want to read that through real quick and because there's a couple little tidbits in here that we didn't know yet, right? So yeah. the USFL is a new prof professional football league that will launch in April of 2022. We knew that. Training camps for the 2022 season will begin Monday, March 21st. Didn't know that. We actually expected that the player selections would happen late February and it would go right into training camp. So it mm -hmm. looks like there's about a three week window before we jump into that. Yes, there is. That that's the that's the part I think that surprised me, like you're saying as well, because the expectation was that, you know, there's a good list of players that are either from the TSL or that they have they're collected from other various leagues or that they have already kind of pre scouted out in the past, and that you can just kind of flip the switch first week of March, and then you get maybe a month and a half of training camp. Now it's setting up where it's going to be almost, if not slightly under a month for each team to prepare does change a bit of things though. I imagine they're going to be doing stuff. Obviously we're going to discuss new coaches for half the league here in a second, but it, imagine with between that March 1st through 20th, dates you're going to have things that players and coaches are going to be evaluating before they then hit the physical aspects of getting ready for the season for sure i mean there's I, i'm amazed that well i don't really know how to uh, uh, uh put this thought 
out into the world, right? And I'm, I'm going with that on the fly. We're going Bill O'Reilly style. We're not cutting that out, folks. That's not how we do it at the <laughs> USFL podcast. Ignore the cut that you saw earlier. Sign us up. So anyway, I have all these thoughts in my head, right? And I, I don't even really know how to, how to package them up. But it is quite mm-hmm. amazing how it's similar to the AAF in the, in the fact that we're getting a lot of announcements very close to the season, but it doesn't sure. feel like the AAF, right? I, there's no impending doom and gloom, right? We have the broadcasting. We have the financing. We have essentially what seems to be a three-year plan to keep this league afloat. And what you mentioned right there is the beautiful part about this is they essentially had a couple years of training camps in the spring league. They have almost every guy that's looking to get a job on in football. They pretty much have everybody in their Rolodex over the last two mm-hmm. years. Everybody, well, not maybe everybody, but a lot of the players that ended up in the XFL in 2020 came through the spring league. Naturally, the spring league for the, the two seasons after that. And now with the USFL... I mean, it, it feels right. It feels natural. And, and I'm excited because there was, you know, there was a lot of great guys in the spring league. I think it exceeded a lot of people's expectations. And I think the USFL is going to do the same here. Getting a little bit off track, but you guys will learn that's what the ref does the best. Let's get back to this press release. So eight teams take, play, uh, take part in a 10-week regular season that concludes Sunday, June 19th. I don't think mm-hmm. we knew that. I think we could have kind of guessed it because it was reported that the championship would play, take place July 3rd. This is two weeks prior to that. But we have yeah. confirmation, which all pretty much confirms the July 3rd championship. Speculation yeah. zone, but it seemingly confirms it. All games will be aired on Fox, NBC, or their respective affiliates. Let's pause here for a minute because, again, this is our first episode. We, T- take a step back. Yeah, we, we spoke about this. this on this year in spring football, but Fox getting one of their main competitors to not only sign a broadcast deal, but receive rights media fees from one of their competitors is still blowing my mind, right? This is huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it's the part that to me sold me on what the viability could be for this league because of the fact we haven't seen really one that's taken in recent years, that is a con a TV contract and said, Oh yeah, we've made, we're making money on it now. You know, we we're being paid, we're being paid to give you rights to do these broadcasts. So they're getting some, some revenue back in <laughs> to their, at least their pocket with partnering up with NBC and more exposure for two networks now, that they're going to be doing one of them, which of course already owns the league. So that was fascinating in its own right, that they're going to be running the ship. And I just, I stress this to, uh, on my interview with, uh, Tom and Abraham Abraham. here on, on Abraham. Yes. Thank you. On 97.7 FM, uh, down in Tennessee Valley. And, you know, I, I said that that really is the serious draw. If those people that have doubt on this league and what they're trying to do, you know, the fact that they sold an, an an entity like NBC on this, I think that has to signal that, you know, they aren't slouching around with this. You have to have a, a network is going to be skeptical, I think, of a product like this at this point from recent history. Mm-hmm. So, you know, NBC for crying out loud, they they were part of the right. original XFL variant, you know, before 2.0's success. So they know what it takes to or at least they've been down that path and see the red flags uh, you would think. So them partnering up, I thought that was a massive move. It makes sense because of the sports that they have lost, mm-hmm. but it makes you have to feel even much better about this knowing that they said, yeah, I bite. I'll, I'll give in some cash for it. And not, and again, for three years, for three years, three years, that's the contract length. That's uh, three that, seasons. We don't know how much they're getting. It's speculated to be a good amount. But I would say, who cares? Three years, right? Even look, looking back at the XFL, they had a two-year deal. I don't really know what the AAF's situation was, to be honest with you. Uh, at minimum, a year, but uh, we saw that mm-hmm. one. Yeah, that one was a time buy with like the networks, but I don't know about the length of contract like mm-hmm. you're talking. So, so that, that's, the, that's the difference there. <laughs> yeah, so seeing a three-year contract, seeing the way that the USFL is going into it with a central hub, again, it hasn't been confirmed yet, but... All signs point to Birmingham. Uh, Mm -hmm. I would say that they're going in this very smart. 
and they might not even have to. And I would say if this is successful, which I think it can be, I think that the spring league seasons, the precursor to all of this, would be a great case study in how to propose and launch a sports league of any kind, right? They got awesome. Fox's ear with that. They got Fox's attention with it. And they, I mean, realistically, they were able to crunch the hard numbers. If we don't advertise at all, if we don't even sell tickets, and something that isn't the case with the USFL, but is with the Spring League, if they have teams that aren't even associated with cities, even if it's name only, will people watch? And I think they were surprised by the number of people that watched. And I think that the USFL is going to draw even bigger numbers. I think we'll see comparable numbers to the XFL, maybe even more because I think there's more people since the XFL was forced to shut down. I think there's more people that are interested in spring football just because of what the XFL was able to do. And again, we are XFL fans here too. So just mm -hmm. because we run a USFL podcast doesn't mean we, I mean, shoot, I started XFL newsroom, sign me up. Uh, <laughs> but I think, I, I think that is going to bode well in their favor. And quite honestly, them not going head to head. I'm super excited about 2023 possible year round football. But again, we're getting off track. I'm going to get back to this because there's a couple more little tidbits here. Each team will carry a 38 man roster active roster and seven man practice squad players will be employees of the usfl receive a base compensation as well as eligible for win bonuses so 38 man roster i know there's a lot of people online that said whoa geez that's that's a kind little slim. slim it's a little <laughs> slim kind of slim but i will say the spring league also had 38 man rosters and i would say for the most part they didn't run into too many issues um it is slim. I could see them expanding upon that as we go into season two, season three. But again, if you want to stick around, you got to make sure that your money's in the right order. It's just one of those extra things. I mean, if if having a 38-man roster make, make sure that I can see the USFL come back for season two, three, four, five, ten, make it make it 34. I don't care. I don't know if you could do that, but you know, then you, I mean, you're just getting a little slim, but you get what I'm saying here, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I get what you're saying. Uh, it is a bit slimmer because it's even smaller than the XFL's roster mm -hmm. sizes too. You know, for those that know, you know, the NFL is a 53 man roster and then, you know, the XFL hit below, below the 50 into the 40 marks. So 38, you know, that's definitely having to take a step back. Plus you think about it too, you know, off the top of your head, you're going, all right, you have 11 man teams per each side. There's no like Iron Man one platoon mm -hmm. system in normal football. So 22 people at all times are going to be on the field for the most part. And then of course, special teams you got to account for. So who is in that unit or who is not and who's on the sidelines for backups. You kind of have to do a little deeper thinking with how you pick and choose who's going to be on your squad because you're limited. You can't just have extra reserves to be reserves. You have to like your reserves have to be ready to go and be somewhat decent quality at that point because of injuries being more crucial. If they happen to show For up, For instance, you can't do uh, Mark Tressman style and draft every tight end <laughs> in the league. I swear. I swear he drafted like six tight ends. Oh my God. He, he, he was something else. I've seen the people I've seen people talking. It's like, I swear if Mark Tressman's in this <laughs> league and I'm like, Hey, you don't know, but I mean, if they need a spot, I mean, he he could be there. Wasn't Tressman the coach of the Bears for a bit? Yes, he was. He was for the Bears, and I I have my memories. <laughs> I, that's all I'm going to tell you. That is a part of my life that I'm like, oh yeah, that happened for a little bit. You know, I'll say this: I don't think it's likely, but you know who I want to see? Whether it's the USFL, XFL, or shoot, even back in the NFL, I think this is the greatest shame that Jim Caldwell is not coaching in football right now. I mean, Oh, he's one of the hottest names. Yeah. And he was amazing absolutely. for the lions. Even he, they fired him on a winning record. I get it. They haven't won a playoff. They've won one playoff game in my flipping life. We're getting off topic here. I don't care. We're talking about the lions, <laughs> but they, he didn't deserve that because I mean, look at what happened to the lions since they got rid of him, Patricia. And I like Dan Campbell. But geez, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the numbers don't lie, my friend. Anyway. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
they blew it up. But look, uh, to, to fill that point, like even you, you go on a tangent, that's fine. But, but here's here's the thing: they, these are options. Like we've we haven't gotten all of them re- revealed, but like there's still people out there, and you know we can slightly speculate and have some fun with that, I guess. You know, because there are talents they're trying to make this look legitimate and say, hey, these are people from football backgrounds that they want to go for and who you hire also impacts who is going to be looked at in these player pools and who they pick up in these player pools. Cause you know, at least rumor has, has it that we've understood. There's nothing confirmed by this, by the way, but you know, they're going to do this a specific way on how they do the player selection. So like, you're not going to have like one team just pick the first, the whole time. So I think it still matters. You got to have the right coach. Oh, absolutely. You know, with good backgrounds and good recognizability for a public sense that are football fans that say, Hey, I know that guy. Speaking of coaches stick around because we are going to be talking about the first four head coaches that were announced, but let's get back to this. So another little tidbit here to be eligible to sign with the USFL, an individual must be, must have graduated from high school in 2020 or an earlier year. So they have to be two years removed from high school, which I believe was the same in the XFL. Right? I don't think we I had think, anybody think, come in, but I think it was the same rule. I think you're correct. That was that was what was being uh, put around, you know. And of course, they they got into super early stages. And only you know, Kenny Robinson being mm-hmm. the most famous of the one person that took up that opportunity. So we're kind of hitting the reset button to see if that can work again. And and I mean, I think we'll see a gradual build on things like that. Um, maybe not for the first season, but. I, if it is successful, I like, again, if the XFL made it to that second season, I think we would have seen a lot more Kenny Robinson's, maybe not all, yeah, maybe well, not I mean, all teams worth, but I'm talking a handful. We'd at least get maybe five or six and there would be probably a star in that bunch. Well, the U I mean, the USFL could re kind of hit the kick, the restart if you want in terms of doing that. Like I say, you have at least somebody that ventures out with this player pool and then next year they do it. And then, you know, I don't know if the XFL yet is going to do it again, but I mean, it's possible. And so then that would be more interest. That's what I'd be curious about with that. And I, I think that the eligibility is a good requirement too, because, you know, some people do ask, well, you know, I don't want to pull it straight from high school. I mean, uh, I know some people might remember this in the show that are listening to the show, but, you know, Maurice Leggett made such a big media storm back in the day for trying to jump after one year. So I can only imagine if a league said, yeah, we have no restrictions because that's a hot button topic that I think you want to avoid. I think the two year limit also helps them say, Hey, we still emphasize like you can get an education and all that. And of course they have a news piece that we were going to mention about that, that helps. So there's, there's reasoning behind it. Probably a smart idea with the two years, I'd say. For sure. And we'll talk about that. This, they did add an incentive. So we're, we're going to wrap this, just the rest of this memo up. I don't know. We dragged a three paragraph memo into probably a 10, 15 minute conversation, <laughs> but that's how we do it at the USFL podcast. Dissecting it. Right, right. Dissecting well, it, my friend. We have to get you know, all the little nooks and crannies. We got to get them out of there. So player selection meeting will be held February 22, 22nd and 23rd. To be eligible for selection, this is key because a lot of players have been emailing me, potential players, asking, how do I get into the draft, the player selection, the pool, whatever you want to call it. So this is this is just the real situation here. To be eligible for mm-hmm. selection, players are required to sign a contract with the league beforehand for consideration. They cut out the website where well, you will be asked to provide relevant inter- information, including your name, birthday, college links, game fill, so on and so forth. So essentially... The way it looks, that like there's not going to be any open tryouts. There's not going to be any combine. Mm-hmm. It looks like the USFL, at least for the most part, has a list of guys that they're reaching out to either based on their agents or their work in the past. Again, we could speculate with the Spring League. Um, but, yeah, so if you're looking for an open tryout, if you're looking for a combine, season one doesn't look like it's happening. My question to you, Zach, do you think we'll see it for a season two? Well, I think that you should. Uh, I, they, here's the thing that kind of plays into this as well, Stefan. Remember they, they announced this league officially exists back in June. So they wanted a quick turnaround to get this done. This to me is a formality to just say, Hey, to get this feasibly in. And so that we can have this where we have a reliable group of players that we don't have to do the extra scouting yet. 
let's just get this group. We'll get a initial team in and then you can rebuild or do as you will as coaches or GMs, which it sounds like coaches will have somewhat of the power of GMs, according to those that are talking around and that they can do it. So I think like next year that I would say it's, it's definitely going to happen. I don't see a reason why it wouldn't. Um, I don't think it's fee. I don't think it's feasible to continue doing the player pool unless you're assuming that rosters are going to turn over every year. And then you just want to have a resubmission, which to me is not healthy for broadcast. Cause you want to have some sort of roster continuity as a league. So no, I think that you're going to see scouting and there's enough talent that comes out of colleges every year that they can go to all these other combines that the NFL does or other tryouts sure. and send scouts. The XFL is already starting to do that. So, you know, by next year, I think the USFL, at least the teams, once they get those even built up like post off season in July for the USFL, they're going to send feeders. Like I, they're, I don't see them doing a second year of a player pool. Mm -hmm. And I think I would be a little flabbergasted if they went that route. Yeah, yeah I, I think I think you're absolutely right. I think we'll probably see them um, definitely do some type of tryout or a combine or at least more be a little bit more open with with their selection. I think they probably have most of the people. Like I said, we talked about with the spring league kind of at hand. So right. I want to switch topics here. We're going to go into we, we kind of brushed on a little bit the the the, the potential incentive for joining the uh, the USFL, right? So clearly the big incentive yeah. for NCAA is if you go there, you're, you're getting a college degree, right? This is a little bit different. We'll talk about it. But the, the USFL put out a press release earlier this week on the 5th, so Wednesday, uh, that mm -hmm. saying the USFL will provide players and staff and staff tuition-free and debt-free college degree program. I mean, my initial instinct is to say this is super cool. I think this is pretty dang neat. Um, I've seen different opinions online. Fr uh, friend of the show, Greg, online, he he has his own experiences with, uh, what does he got, for-profit schools? Is that the term? I, I, right, That that's the term you're right, looking for. Right. I don't know much about that. I don't know really the ins and outs. So I'm not going to speak on if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm going to tell you my opinion. My opinion is I like that there's an option. I, I would assume they don't have to use it. Um, and sure, there's probably an incentive for either the league or the, the schools that they're, they're working with, but of course there is. I mean, I mean that so is every partnership. There's an incentive sure. for NBC in the Fox deal because they have more content. They have more sports to, to broadcast. So, I mean, that's, that's just my initial take on it. Again, I don't, I'm not an expert on the subject, so I don't really want to say something that I don't understand and people get... You know how the pitchforks get online. I don't want to make everybody angry <laughs> sure. in episode one, right? So, I mean, <laughs> right. I'll defer to you. I don't know if you have any extra thoughts on this. Like, what are your initial instincts, thoughts, good, bad? I don't know. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a little more of my background. I, I went to Ball State University, which is a publicly funded facility. Um, so I don't have experience, as my buddy Greg does, with the pay for education mo or the ed education for profit model is how it's put. But what I will say in terms of the PR release, I thought in for the look initially, at least saying that we're doing debt free accredited university opportunities for players and staff, we're offering that option. And it's through strategic education, so either Strayer University or Capella University, which one of those, uh, Strayer that is, is even in, like, you can go in on site for instead of online. So having those two options, having just saying like, hey, like you can get some edu you can go and get some more college credit and you can also get a reasonable, you know, amount of income to play football. Uh, it's thinking about not only your players after football, and, but it's also, I think it shows that you're investing in the league a bit more. It's not just a, it's not just about that. Like it, it is showing that there is, like I said, you are getting incentive for players to come in, but also, you know, it shows that it's a piece that the players show that we're trying to help you out too. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not just a, you're not just a cog in the machine. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to show something that we can further yourself past just us as well. So I take it as mm -hmm. that. Um, I, I trust me. I still, I want to now look into, you know, pay or education for profit schools myself. I'm curious, but on the surface, 
this is a win. And you just look at the response online from this and people have said the same thing. Wow. I'm impressed. Or I can't believe they're doing this. And one thing that it's a callback to as well. Um, it's been mentioned that the Alliance of American football tried to do something similar before and was looking into things before like this, before it closed. So I think that they're able to execute this. They, it shows they're serious again. They have the capital to do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a win to me. Uh, that's all I'm going to put. I it mean, out. it's just one extra incentive on top of the, uh, uh, on top of the, the, the bonus structure and on top of the, the pay structure. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't be mad at something extra. Right. And that's, a, I mean, so I'm, I'm happy with it. We'll see. I mean, maybe we'll hear some horror stories that come out of it, but I don't know. I, I like what I'm seeing so far. Uh, yeah. Which moves us in, I think, to our, our the, the big story, right? Well, there's actually two stories that. So if you look at the press release, right? Yeah, there is. So there is. we had, I mean, this morning it looked like the first four uh, USFL head coaches had leaked. Um, so let's. I mean, we're not going to jump into the wrong ones, but we'll we'll jump into the right ones. But at the same time, the league when they announced the head coaches, actually, it was announced live on the herd. Uh, on FS1. Unlike the last time from the herd, though, I think the last time we had to wait about an hour and a half. This time, they knew. Let's put it in yeah, hour they, three. And he kept. Yeah, they dragged that one out. <laughs> I swear, they were waiting. They were waiting to finalize that paperwork on, uh, on, on that other coach that maybe we'll talk about here in a little bit. But uh, I think when, when we, when we were going into the announcement, I think a lot of people expected that we were going to get either all of the Southern division or the Northern division. So, I mean, I was a little surprised when we saw a mixture, we saw a mixture in there. I think, what was it? Three, three Southern teams and one Northern team. Is that what we got? No, we got, it was a split two, of two, two, two. That's two, right. Yeah, had, yeah. 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 You had, you had, if you want to go, but I was going to say you had the generals and the stars from the North get represented. And then the gamblers and the bandits getting theirs announced too. So they split them up and they also announced the divisions by the way. And on this around the same time saying, Hey, here's our division logos. Mm. So there's a little bonus too, with that same deal. rapid fire announcements. I like it. I like it. So let's just run down the list. We got Bart Andrus, Philadelphia stars, Mike Riley, New Jersey generals, Todd Haley, Tampa Bay Bandits, and Kevin Sumlin from the Houston Gamblers. My, my initial, uh, my initial take. I like them. I like them. I know it's kind of mixed online. I think there's a lot of people that are excited. A lot of people that maybe don't know some of these guys. I know Mike Riley. People want gangbusters online. Mike Riley. People love oh, yeah. to flip it, <laughs> commanders. You know what I mean? Um, so. The, but I think there's some folks online that are like, eh, I don't know. I think, though, as the season kicks off, you'll learn some of these guys. We had the same thing with the XFL, too, especially with the uh, AAF. But, I, I mean, every one of these guys on here, I mean, a lot of them have NFL uh, experience, right? We have uh, – there's only one guy with only college experience, I believe, right? Kevin Sumlin? That's my understanding. Yeah, that's that. That's where his background is mainly revolving. And back in Houston, in the college scene, sort of, kind of, mm -hmm. sort of, kind of. Yeah, Houston, Texas A and M. You know, Arizona was his last gig. Yes, which I lived in both Texas and Arizona. So Kevin Sumlin signed me up. I like you. You're my kind of guy. So I'm gonna run. Well, actually, we'll we'll, we'll go back and forth here. Do you want to run through Mr. Riley's credentials here? Tell you what. How about we do this? I'll give you one oh, more. Okay. I'll take the north, you take the south. Okay, even I like it. Since I also am in Indianapolis, I'm technically northern US in a way. So we'll make it that cheeky way of I doing like it. it. So I'll get going. Mike Riley, first off. By the way, want to clarify for those on Twitter that saw me, I am sorry for mistyping his I last did it name. Too. <laughs> it, I was we were just trying to get it out there that, that was announced. But Riley, as you as you mentioned, Stefan, he has a lot of hype around him because of the commanders, first off. His coaching tenure with them. He did a great job with that franchise. Funny enough, how Daryl Johnston also is mm -hmm. an exec from the commander from his time with the commanders. He's now with Fox, of course, and is running the helping run the ship with you know, Brian Woods up in the football operation. So Riley, of course, is known much for that. If you're an XFL guy, he was doing the OC duties in Seattle with Jim Zorn. Otherwise, the other mainstays for him uh, is his coaching tenure with the Chargers in the NFL, and especially with his time for the Oregon State Beavers. 
Uh, those are the other two, well, maybe in Nebraska as well, I'd mm-hmm. say, are his primary ones you might remember him from in particular. But if you're an, a fan of Alton Spring football, that's the big deal is he was the commander's head coach. So uh, he already has experience with building a roster and getting the best out of uh, diamonds in the rough type of talent that we're going to be looking at. And tell you what, I'm gonna, we'll shift off one, one and one. So I did generals. Which one of the Southern ones are you going to do? So I'll, I'll just run into the gamblers. We kind of talked about Sumlin a little bit, but you know what? I do really like the local flair here. Yes, he, he recently came from Arizona, but he has experience with Houston and Texas A&M. And if I remember correctly, he was there during Manziel Mania. He, so worst case scenario, he knows how to handle a madman. I mean, that's a benefit. <laughs> that is a huge benefit that you might not think about. If there is anybody that is insane, he knows how to deal with it. Sorry, Manziel, if you're watching this. I probably shouldn't tr- trash talk people like that. But <laughs> I mean, it's everybody's well, hey, thinking you know what? it, right? But, but hey. He was crazy in college though. You have, that is a true, that's a true thing. People saw those highlights and <laughs> saw the news stories of what he did back in the day. Money man. <laughs> that, this that's, that's a, that's a, that's almost a fact. If not a fact, <laughs> he was, he was wild. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, yeah, let's jump into the stars here. This is, is another kind of yeah. familiar name. Maybe. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Philadelphia stars. Now, first off, Bart Andrus, um, if you follow the TSL this year or in 2020, you know who Bart Andrus is, or if you follow the XFL, honestly, guy's been around the block. He, if he was a Johnny cash song, he would be, <laughs> I've been everywhere. I'm serious. I mean, I mean, you're talking place. You're talking credentials at BYU with the Tennessee Titans and Oilers during that kind of phase. You know, he was a big mainstay in the NFL Europe scene with the Amsterdam Admirals World Bowl champion. during their, their time. Yeah, exactly. Was a winner there, you know, offensive coordinator for the St. Louis Rams. He had a short stint with the Toronto Argonauts and the CFL again, his spring league tenure. I mean, Dude has been in every scene, the UFL for crying Mm. out loud, the United football league, for those that remember that scene, he's been in basically any league you can imagine. And so his connections with the spring league really has really has put him in this spot. He also was successful with the generals in the spring Mm. league. So it made sense to bring it back. What surprised me is, is that, you know, he did guide the generals. So I was kind of like, well, why doesn't he have the generals? But Hey, you, you know what? I'm all, I'm glad to have him in. Again, he he's done a lot of good stuff with spring fo- with the spring football scene in re- in the recent three years that things have been picking up, and I think it would not it would make to me little sense if you didn't have him in because of what he's done for the TSL. He he deserved a coaching spot to me, mm-hmm. so I like that to see that he got his uh, his due with getting the star. I agree. I agree. I think that, I think it's a solid pick. I think Andrus is a solid pick. I thought so in the, in the spring league as well. And I think he was perfect for running something like a team nine in the XFL. So I'm very happy to, to see him come into the league. I was also a little surprised yeah. that we didn't see him with the generals just because it was the only team that, I mean, it's the only USFL namesake that was in the spring league, but it's the only team that carried over for all intents and purposes. And so you would expect, oh, if they have the same coach, it's going to be in the same spot. There's probably other reasons there. Who knows? But we're going to Maybe. we're going to jump into the last one here. Tampa Bay Bandits, yeah. Todd Haley. So when we look back at the rumored leaks that came out earlier in the day before it was made official, we saw Haley on the list. We saw Sumlin on the list. We saw Andrus on the list. Sumlin was the only one that was actually in the right city. Uh, and yep. where was, uh, Mike uh, Andrew Andrews was in new Orleans. Right. Yes, 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 yes. And Haley was in, in, I don't know. I don't know. Wh- who, it doesn't matter where now we're Well, yeah. I mean, it was a rumor said also is why, but they were mostly were just, they were, the coaches were there. The teams yeah. were not for the most part. Yeah. And one of them, <laughs> it seems like he might may be on board here. We'll just have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, sure. So Tampa Bay Bad- Bandits, Todd Haley, again, NFL experience, Kansas, Kansas City Chiefs, offensive coordinator for the Steelers, and with the Browns, offensive coordinator. So again, we're seeing a good mix here. We see a mix of NFL guys, college guys, and then even on Andrus. I mean, this guy's like a, a globetrotter. He's been, a, he's been everywhere, yes. right? He has the experience. And I mean, I think, again, uh, other than maybe, well, I'm not going to say other than, that's mean. I think he's be one of the coolest coaches to work with just because of his, 
he's worked everything from like the high school level all the way to professional levels. And I think that's just flipping neat. Right. And so, so right, right. Here, here's one thing. It's funny with, uh, you say high school level, Todd Haley actually has had a break from professional right. anything for like three, go, for three plus years now. Cause his last accredited coaching stint right now is like, I believe Riverside view high school mm-hmm. or along that like, um, <laughs> otherwise he was with, the Browns in 2018, that was it. And I think to me, that was one I saw where it was a lot of like, I don't know about this guy mm-hmm. type of, uh, bringing up like the most, either that or someone, it was like the big two that they're like, I don't know about these picks. So I'm like, I'm curious, like, who was your guy that you're like, I know we've been pretty positive. Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, I think the credentials are good. I think they're guys that should be here, but is there one right now out of the four that you're like, eh, maybe, maybe I'm going to be curious how this plays out. You know, that's, that's a tough one to say, uh, you know, let me, let me, let me early, think about but, this. You know. I mean, looking at the group, I, honestly, and, and I know bandit ball people probably would be upset about this, but I'd have to go Todd Haley. And, and this is, I'm just saying, if I had to choose one that I'm not sure about, it's probably him. And I would say most people would probably pick Andrus, but again, for the reasons I mentioned before, I think this is like, this is the perfect formula for him, right? This is the place where he can make the magic, the type of magic that he knows how to make happen. He can do it here. You look at uh, Sumlin, a lot of college experience. We're going to have a lot of guys that are coming with that type of caliber play. I think that's going to be important. Mike Riley, he's got, we mentioned it before, boatloads of spring alternative football experience and NFL experience. So when I look at Haley, again, a lot of NFL experience, but only NFL, well, maybe not only, but you know what I'm trying to say here. Not as much sure. of that alternative experience that maybe some of these other guys have. Yeah, that, 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 that was, that was kind of my thing. I know, like I said, it's, uh, it, it's, he's been the one that's also been <laughs> the longest away from football too. Not saying that he, or at least a professional scene, you know, I, I don't dislike any of these choices. I will put that out there. But, you know, there are, with everyone, there's a list. Mm-hmm. And obviously the next four, we're going to have the same spiel. Right. You know, right, and right. talk about that. You know, like someone was the other one I noticed those game mentions. But, like, you're talking, that was going to be my point you just stole. was like, <laughs> well, if they're targeting college talent and he's basically just been in college this whole time, you know, there's a different mentality between the college coaching and professional coaching. Mm-hmm. I mean, heck, you know, if we want to do off topic, I mean, Urban Meyer just went through that ringer for crying out loud. You know, there is differences in how you approach this. And I, I think you're, it's the USFL kind of sets us up up in the middle as like a in between ish type of like mentality. You know, you're getting a lot of young guys, but also it's a professional league. So, you know, as someone to me works in this instance, cause it's an in between, but you're getting that youthful talent that still is chipper and wanting to prove itself, get out there and make a difference for the team. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, Either way you look at it, we have the first four head coaches. I don't think anybody really expected that we would see them this early in the year. So oh, no. I'm no, signed up <laughs> on that. I think we have some good names in store, and it seems like we might know one of the next ones at least. So I'm going to actually pull this up on the page. So one in the initial leaks earlier, it was mentioned that Gene Chizik was going to be announced the head coach of the Birmingham Stallions. And again, this was part of that initial rumored leak that had happened earlier uh, before the news was made official. And since then, mm-hmm. Chiswick actually came out and he said, look, I've had some discussions with them. We haven't finalized a contract. Ain't happening, at least right now. At least right now. Well, Chris Breeze, CBS Sports, I believe, uh, he reports that he's following up on the Gene Chiswick situation, uh, at least the rumor, and he's hearing that the move is a done deal. So whether that means that they signed the contract before, from when that was mentioned till now, or if it was done and it just wasn't in the cards to be announced, or maybe they're still finalizing the deal, but it's looking like we're headed in the right direction. So we have four more. We might only have three more. Me personally, I think, again, Chiswick, it, I think it's perfect, perfect for the USFL. I think he's going to be a great fit. Birmingham Stallions, get a good name, get a good coach. What What are your initial feelings if this turns out to be true? If it does turn out, and we again, we got to specify that because, you know, 
it's not official yet, so we can't just act like it is official. But if this turns out to be true, and there are a lot of signs that are pointing fingers towards being true, <laughs> I, I find this fascinating because I looked into Chiswick when that was leaked uh, really this morning. And I was like, okay, let, let, let me double check his background again because it's been a minute. Um, and I don't, and you know, with all the leaks I follow, and you and I, you and I both know this well, it's, it's kind of hard to keep, <laughs> keep it, everything in order at times. So, Chiswick, of course, has his background with coaching at Auburn uh, post Tommy Tuberville era. Um, and he also was doing coordinated work for North Carolina as well, uh, as the uh, OC, that is. So his last role was there. He's mainly for a few years now been at the SEC network as an analyst. So he hasn't had much work back in that scene in a bit. That's what's fascinating to me is he's going to be jumping back mm -hmm. into it for the first time in a while. Um, Otherwise, I mean, Hey, again, profile fits. Well, I see it as like a Kevin someone type of hire where like you have a lot of the college expertise right. and you can fit that in between kind of gap. That's the USFL is presenting itself. So if it's true, I dig it. Mm. Now, is it the stallions? Who knows? Because even with the leaks, like Greg, like Greg Mecca, Mecca, Mecca yeah. had earlier today that as we're recording. Yeah. I mean, those teams weren't correct. So I am not, it's not guaranteed. He's going to be with Birmingham, but is he maybe being signing a contract? There's signs saying that he might just be doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm expecting that we'll probably hear the next round of coaches soon. If I were to guess, I would say probably next week, maybe a week exactly from the time that we heard these ones again, speculation zone. Let me just let that note, not confirm speculation. We're just shooting the S yes. here. So don't, don't rip my legs off my arms off. Don't bring the pitchforks <laughs> and fire. If it doesn't happen, we're just, we're just talking about what could possibly happen. I mean, looking forward, we have a lot of things still left to learn with from the league. One of them clearly is the remaining coach reveals. Like I said, I mm -hmm. think we'll probably get them sooner rather than later, especially because they're going to be putting these teams together next month, right? At the end of next month. Yeah, right. So, right. I mean, do you think do you think we'll get another grandiose experience where it's on the herd? Do you think maybe maybe we'll see it somewhere <laughs> else? Uh what do you think? Will the herd add a fifth or a f how many hours is the herd? 3? <laughs> I think it's three, Will they add but, a fourth hour? Yeah. To make us wait might, one hour longer. Might as well get those ratings up, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will say just we're going to go on the status quo. They're probably going to use the herd to announce the teams or the coaches again. It's If they already did it for the teams and they did it for half, why would you, like, for example, imagine if you switched up to, say, you know, Undisputed, and all of a sudden you, like, make that flow go horribly and like, all right, <laughs> skip, skip sharp, <laughs> Shannon, let's stop. Right. We got to talk about these. It was kind of funny. They debated them, you know, like who's the best of the eight coaches at the end, but it's going to be the herd. They're going to keep the consistency of doing it. Um, if you'd seen it once, you've seen it twice. Odds are they're going to do it three times in a row to make you go back to the dismay. Of course, I understand some people, I know not everyone likes Colin cowards, the her show, the herd, but it's the one that. You know, it brings in good ratings for Fox. It's a great sports platform for them. You know, obviously Fox Sports Radio and FS1, they are trying to compete and be one of the top guys that provides sports content. Of course, they're competing with like the likes of ESPN. So, you know, they're going to do it through one of their top shows. And honestly, the herd is probably the better path anyway of their main slate. They're going to do it again there. They've already done it twice. They're going to do it a third time. That's what I'm trying to get across yeah. to you. No, I agree. I agree. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know why people hate the herd so much. Um, I don't watch <laughs> it. So maybe that's probably why I don't understand the hate for it. Maybe if I watched it more, I'd say <laughs> I get it. I don't know. <laughs> I think some of the, I think some of the discussions with certain folks, cause I, I saw one, it was uh, they're like, oh man, I have to listen to him talk about Baker Mayfield again, <laughs> or uh, Aaron Rodgers again. I'm like, I, yeah, I'm like you, I don't watch enough of the herd or listen enough to the herd. But I mean, I remember with the team announcements, for example, like I jumped in to watch and like, sure enough, it was a Baker Mayfield discussion. So like, as soon as somebody tweeted that out, it clicked. I was like, <laughs> oh, wow, that's way too familiar for me <laughs> already. <laughs> so, so maybe, yeah, maybe that's the thing. It just sticks on topics too long. I, I don't yeah. know. I, I don't watch enough of Colin Coward's yeah. show. That's the I thing. mean, maybe by the end of the season, we'll be experts. 
Um, Maybe we will. So we have a couple of Fox Synergy, Stefan. That's what they want. Sign us up. (laughs) So we have a couple, I mean, looking forward, there's a couple things I think that we still have on the docket too. So, I mean, uniform reveals, that's a big one. I, I've seen that online. People want to see what the uniforms look like. The other one, detailed scheduled. We, we have our kickoff date, April 16th. So it was actually projected or reported early back in October that it was going to be April 15th, which is a Friday, which made people... Wait, Friday, that's a little bit weird. Um, but then even in their release, they said some games are going to be on Friday, some going to be on Monday. So people right. say, oh, okay, maybe it is a Friday. Well, today they some announced special 100 days away. Well, yeah, actually yesterday. So we're about, what, 99 days. The day that this goes live, we're less than 100 yeah. days from the kickoff the of the mark. USFL. Uh, what do you think we'll get first, jerseys or schedules? Ugh, you know, if I had to be a betting man, I'm going to go with the jerseys if I'm wanting to be honest. I, I think I think I'll go with the jerseys. I'm just going to go off that prediction um just based on what will cause more interest all of a, all of a sudden and what you could then kick off maybe I don't know, maybe possibly more social media engagement, mm-hmm. I guess. Um I, I think that that's a good way of doing it. And I'm not I'm I, I'm going to even throw it out there too. I bet they reveal them on the yep, herd. Yep, yep. <laughs> I just, I, I'm for some reason, like I said, they will, they will hammer home the herd as your de facto USFL show. And you will be going there anytime they say something. So I think like for that, I don't know, about maybe even the detailed schedule, like shoot, maybe that's where they drop it yeah. as well. You know, but I think uniforms just because it gets people buzzing more. So the schedule, I mean, we already know the time frame. It's more just a formality sake, I guess. And with it being a hub, there's no like, when can I buy tickets for my home team? Because there is really no true home team except for Birmingham. So honestly, I think the uniforms drop first. You want to get that hype going a lot more. The schedule just doesn't do enough until you start selling the teams off to different cities. Right, right, right. I just hope they put them on sale. I just hope they sell them. I want want one. I want a new jersey to my collection. Maybe we'll get it framed, put it in the back. I I got a bunch of XFL ones too, so maybe we'll just... Frame them all and get build them all the, set up over here. Build the set. I mean, I gotta get, I gotta get mine upgraded. Uh, as I've uh, stressed to you, <laughs> I have, I have some plans for that in the future. Here's, here's the thing I want to ask mm-hmm. you, by the way, of the uniforms. So, so, someone made a great point. There's a lot of red in the team, like color palettes. Right. So, <laughs> I don't know about you. I'm gonna be intrigued mainly by how they balance all the red and yellow, red and gold in these four, like for example, between the Panthers stars, the generals and the, uh, yeah, <laughs> the generals, as well as like, you got the gamblers too, that all have some sort of red involved. I mean, that's going to be tricky. You would hope and correct me if I'm wrong, but they did have home and away, even stallions too, by the way, they, they did have <laughs> home and away jerseys in, uh, the spring league. Is that right? Yeah, uh, some teams. I yeah. Say. Ooh, um, I think some did. I'm, I'm trying to remember because the linemen they stuck with, I believe, just the white and white with the black text mm-hmm. in theirs. Yeah, because I don't remember any like full black uniforms or full yellow uniforms. Yeah, I, I would say it. If they want to absolve the confusion, they're going to need to have home and away jerseys, or at least have it strict i don't know it'd be so hard because even if you give the teams with red alternate them white and red sooner or later you're gonna have the team's face right so <laughs> right uh, yeah i don't know yeah. i don't know how that's gonna work out i mean we'll see hopefully we'll find out sooner rather than later i mean we have to we're, we're less than 100 days from kickoff so i'm excited i'm excited it's gonna it's gonna happen soon sooner rather than later i hope and the it's gonna be the one that i think is another jump starter for social media or that's the one that maybe they kick off like a full force social media continuous posting mm. you know because that's a that's a point the league has been of course doing enough with but not over exceeding at yet is getting posting out and engagement but it's got to happen soon enough right, so right. that might be it so i think you know what i think we covered as much as we can for a debut episode I think, I don't know, is he, any last thoughts, any last things you want to bring up before we, we go into the old fun outro? Oh, actually, after that, we do have well, to announce the winner. We do have to I was announce say, the winner. Besides the giveaway. 
So Besides stick around, guys. It's coming. Colin Coward all, all style. I'm mention, all I'm, oh, Colin Coward style. If you watch. That's going to be a. It's going to be a continuing thing with the show. We'll. Ref, I'll say Colin Coward more in my life than I ever <laughs> have in the first twenty six years that I have been on this planet. Is <laughs> from this podcast in particular. I my my final thoughts, I guess, with all of this is. You know, we had a lot of people start, you know, that were asking because it is crunch time and, you know, it is, you know, now going on less than four months out where it's like, hey, are we going to hear things? And even with that, it, there was doubt that maybe we'll get stuff in January because, you know, you push things off enough and, you know, some people start wondering if it'll happen. And I think this, I was just really happy just to see that these announcements have really solidified more on me having confidence to back this league and get excited for this league, you know, if anything, and, it, and for others, it's just saying, okay, this, this is going to happen. So, you know, that's for final thoughts. Like that, that's it. I, I'm just glad to see that we are now executing on things that have been talked about coming around the bend and that we are now fully into everything. We're now. knee deep now. We're, we're right in the mix yeah. of it. Um, I mean, just, I mean, my random thought is I'm just excited to start this podcast. I mean, this is, we're jumping into it right when news is really popping off. I think this is going to be a super fun journey for us. Uh, like we mentioned, we, we did have our first giveaway. We weren't sure that we were going to have a winner for the first episode, but we did our, essentially our goal was if we get a hundred sub subscribers on YouTube, one lucky winner, you're winning a t-shirt or a hat of your choice from the USFL store. So I think I think this is a good now good time to announce it. So earlier I ran a random generator that goes through all of our subscribers on YouTube. It picked one guy. But remember, we're gonna announce it here. You have until the next show, at least the day before the next show, until next Thursday, to DM us on Twitter at USFL Podcast to redeem your prize. And you will need to show proof that you're subscribed. Uh, still, still, yes. uh, because we know how you kids can be. So <laughs> give a round of applause to Mr. E man. He actually left a comment on one of our videos saying bandit ball. Oh, so, you know, he's going to get back to you then if he's doing bandit ball quoting oh, right yeah. now. So sign him up. <laughs> he's going to so get back. I'm going to guess he's probably going to want some Tampa Bay bandits gear, but Mr. E man. DM us on Twitter, and we'll get the hookup. Now, again, we're going to be doing giveaways throughout the show's history. So I know you were saying 100, but I think we go a little bit bigger. I think we go a little bit bigger. I think our next goal here, if we can get 250 subs on Ooh, YouTube. Yeah. Now, here's the twist. Here's the twist. Beyond adding us on Twitter, you also need to jump into the Discord because that's how you're going to have to redeem your prize. See? Two sleeves, both full of tricks. Don't sit on your laurels. You might win and miss out. So, links are all in the description. Again, what you got to do, subscribe to the YouTube, follow us on Twitter, and join the Discord. And I mean... There's no good reason that you wouldn't want to join the Discord. It's full of a bunch of like-minded, good time having spring football fans. Absolutely. We we talk about all the different leagues on there too. So you really are getting something for joining in. Not only an entry, but you're gaining a good to me, you're gaining a good community in there that you get to talk with, including us. We're both in there. So you know, why not get to engage with us if you like our show and join our discord server there with the newsroom crew. I think that it's a, to me, it's a win-win. You get to join in, possibly win a shirt or a hat and help us grow at the same time. And you also get to interact with us at the same time. Like what do you got to lose? Speaking you know? of the newsroom crew, again, we have the USFL podcast, but we're no haters. We support all the other community members out there. So there's a couple I want to mention. So we have the Michigan Panther cast, a newsroom crew member. So if you're a Michigan Panthers yep. fan, head over to USFL Panther cast over on Twitter. We'll have, we post all the episodes over at pfnewsroom.com. Stay tuned there. And of course we had to mention our good old friend, Tron Hawkins with this is the USFL podcast. Uh, he's going to be dropping podcast live streams throughout the season. So make sure you follow him at over at over at Twitter at this is 
the USFL. You guys, again, longtime followers will know Tron and I actually go a long way back. You know, I flew him out to the last game, or not the last, I flew him out to the uh, Dragons game here to help me cover it. And I'm so glad that was the really? game that we picked because it was the last game before the illness that we shall not name ruined everything. So had it been one more week, old Tron would have missed out. So again, longtime friend of mine, longtime supporter of spring football. Go make sure you follow him over there as well. But since we're talking about social media, you know we got to talk about us as well. At USFL <laughs> Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, which we don't use really much, and TikTok, which I haven't even used yet. But it's nice and simple. At USFL, make sure you give us a follow. And again, if you subscribe here and click the bell, the bell builds morale. You could win a t-shirt and hat. Once we hit 250 subs, just like my man, Mr. E-Man, who I'm guessing is going to get some kind of bandit gear. Well, that could be you. You could be in some Panthers gear. You could be in some Gamblers gear. We don't care. We just want you here with us, the USFL podcast. Additionally, you can follow me directly at The Ref Says. Make sure you follow at USFL Newsroom. And my man, Zach, over at Grid Gallery Pod. And is it just at Zach Kyleman? Yes, it is good, sir. Sign you up. <laughs> yes, And I is. got the name right. I got the name right. And, I, you know, it's funny. You I was did. listening to the Tom Abraham show earlier when they introduced you. And at least I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. But I'll say, they, they did get your name right. Uh, Mr. Abraham was right. They usually stumble over my name. But I get it. I get it. I don't. I, I told, just like I told them. Don't feel bad. I've been called much worse. <laughs> so uh, I think that's it for the day. So again, thanks for joining us for the first episode. We hope you stick around for the second, third, fourth, and throughout the rest of the year and years beyond. Make sure you're following us. Make sure you're staying tuned to USFL Newsroom. I don't know. Any last words before we end this out, buddy? Look, the next weeks, next months ahead are just going to be a fun, exciting, thrilling, and honestly, to me, somewhat dizzying time. And I'm, you and I are all for it. And I'm going to quote your famous phrase now for yourself. Sign me up, sign you up, and I hope you sign up with us and too. And everybody, get signed up. We'll be back next week with another edition of the USFL podcast. See you later. <laughs>